Hello. Hello. Welcome to the 300th show. There's not Thank many. You. There's not many shows in Australian TV that even get 300, is there? No, I know. It's very impressive. We nearly lost you to nursing, didn't we? <laughs> Way <laughs> back it, when. This makes it sound dramatic. I think we would have lost a lot more people if I'd become <laughs> a nurse. So what was the spark when you, you decided you wanted to go into nursing? Because this was back in Wodonga, I, I think it was. There was no spark. It was, you know, it was a lack of imagination. <laughs> I just, I've got a family of nurses, so it was more a case of I don't I didn't know what I wanted to do and I went well I guess I'll do what everybody else did. So did you actually go very far with your nursing training? I did a whole training? year of it <gasps> and I actually won an award for being the smartest in my year and then I devastated them all by going oh, I actually don't like it very much and when I feed old people I choke them. <laughs> 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 so I saved lives by becoming a comedian. Well, you got you, you got to uh, the part with the older folks, but at least you didn't go to the thermometer area because no. that's. The, I mean, you know, really. Jeez, you, you've got to be careful with those. Yes, don't you? you have to warm them, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. that's right. Uh, and then, and then comedy. When did you realise that you could be funny? Well, on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been laughed at a lot, <laughs> and, and and most of it's not because I've done anything that I thought was funny. I don't know. I was doing I was doing a, a bachelor of arts degree majoring in drama at university, and I started doing uh, stand up comedy as basically an acting exercise, just to sort of get over stage fright and and figure out you know how to deliver stuff that I'd written in a really natural way. And I was about nineteen at this stage, and I started getting paid fifty bucks here or there. Money. When you're 19, that is a lot of beer money. So I <laughs> say to him, this is all right, I might yeah. keep doing this. And it just sort of, I don't know, I woke up one day and I went, oh, I guess I'm doing this as a career now. Do you come from a funny family? Were you the class clown I at school? I would say they were a funny family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny ha-ha or funny right. weird, I don't yeah, know. Well, yeah, a lot yeah. of families are like that, yeah. aren't they? But was there a spark when you said, right, this is going to be my profession? Not just something that I'll do on Saturdays and Sundays for the $50 beer money, but yes. where you said, I think I can, you know, make a future at this. I think it was, I always knew... But once I made the decision to switch and do an, an acting degree, I, I knew then that that was the only thing I wanted to do was be a performer and I, I couldn't imagine doing anything else with my life. Um, but I, I don't think I ever really expected to do anything more than just eke out a living, which is what 90% of performers yeah. do. So I've been very lucky to you know, have worked consistently for the last 10 years in television. Was it always going to be comedy or did you sometimes want to do the drama? I have done some dramatic work in the past as well. A bit of Shakespeare? <laughs> Spill. Some sh I have. I've done really? Yeah. What Shakespeare did you do? The comedy. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I did Midsummer. Not Titus or anything. No, no. no. I ugly. did Midsummer Night's Dream, yes. Ah. I played Helena. Yeah. And that was myself, Will Anderson, Greg Fleet, uh, Kate Atkinson and Kevin Harrington from Sea Change. What did any of those, those ever do? What did I mean, they, what did they yeah. ever do, really? What's, what's become of them? Yeah. Will Anderson, you never hear anything Nothing. of him anymore, what do you? Hack. No, what? <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Um, but uh, then, of course, there's been shows like The Glass House yes. and, and Rove as yes. well, and your own stand-up shows. Yes. Do you write easily, or is it is it torturous? It's a bit of both. Writing stand-up is, uh, you can only do it when something funny occurs to you. Well, that's the only way I can. I can't sit down and go, right, today I'm going to be hilarious. It just mm. doesn't work like that. You have to see so something or think of something and get a spark for it and write it down, and then you work on it from there and, and go with it. But I'm also writing a book, and that's a whole different process of writing. That is sitting at the computer and staring at your own failure for eight mm. hours a day. Gee, and is there some days when, you, when it just goes, and it all goes out, and the other days yes. when you, you you know you write a paragraph and you rip, chuck it away and yes. start again. Yes, yeah. There, are, every new chapter I'd start the first three days I would spend going. I think I am the most talentless hack that's ever lived. <laughs> I, I'm looking at the page in front of me and I have proof of that. And then something would click and I'd spend the last two days of the week going. No, I'm a literary genius. Yeah, What's it's the book me about? and Hemingway. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> The old woman in the sea. Yes, right. um, what, what's, what's it about? The Give book is clue. about hoarding. Ah. Hoarding. Hoarding. Yeah. There's a D. Hoarding. What, what do you hoard? I used to hoard everything. That's oh. the thing. If I, if, if, if I was more discriminate about it, I would have been able to call myself a collector. <laughs> but I was just, just... Stuff would come into my house and never leave again. But what sort of stuff? Are we talking trinkets? I Are we talking... had kept every sock that I'd ever worn, oh. every pencil I'd ever used, every school case, every school pencil box, everything that I'd ever owned, I had. Oh. So the book is about how I learned 
learnt to let go of all of that and, and are, move on. Are you the same as a lot of other performers? Because I know you've just finished some shows and you've got other shows that are coming up as well. When that final light goes down and the curtain closes, do you go, I'm never going to work again? No, I go, when the hell can I get to the pub? <laughs> <laughs> Because a lot of performers, you know, there's that insecurity. You go, well, I may never get the phone call again. Yeah, but at the same time, I think that you're a performer because you like to work in chunks like that. You like to start a project and see its completion. And well, that's the thing I like to do anyways. Do a run of a show, like in a comedy festival, or write a book where you, you, do, you, you get that sense of achievement when it's completed, mm. and then you move on to the next project. I think sometimes for comedians, it, it's possibly easier than actors who have to wait for the work to come to them. Mm. But as a comedian, I can make my own work at any time it's it's more proactive you can get out there and, and always uh, do you, it. you can go and knock on doors and say you know please love me give me a gig well i mean i, I just can i can do stand up wherever i like whenever i like yeah brilliant. yeah brilliant well thank you very much for being on the 300 show absolute it pleasure. is a joy to have absolute you with us pleasure. Yes. thanks very much i've loved it Karin Grant. Can I just ask you a quick question before we go to a break Karin? i know i put you on the spot here what was it like working with roe for so many years I've lost my microphone now, so okay. I'm talking to yours. You can talk um, into mine. Uh, short. He was very short. <laughs> yes. Well, he was angry with you most of the time? Is that oh, yeah, he's a horrible man. Horrible. Yes, I found that. I, I, I agree. He's lovely. He's a very lovely guy. This. this is very intimate, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Hello. Hi. This is looking quite good. Look at the can monitor. You, can you do this on, on national television? We, I'm quite sure whether we, you can We or just not. did. I think it's sort of just about the borderline PG. <laughs> yeah. Corinne Grug, give a big round of applause, everybody. And we, we need to take a break. Okay. And uh, we'll be back with more of the 300 special right after this. <laughs>